guys, welcome to Slap Your Daddy Barbecue. My name is Winnie from Smoke Queen Barbecue. And as you know, Terry and I love to do collaborations with my 500 gallon Drogon offset smoker. Today we're doing something very special. You know, barbecue is all about spreading love and it's, for me, it is a business, but not just that, it's a passion. And for Harry, it's 100% passion. Today we actually got 16 pork butts donated uh, to us and we decided to smoke it and we're going to uh, give it away to charity. So with this amount of meat, we're going to do it very simple yet uh, very tasty. We're actually going to smoke it naked and which means just no seasoning, nothing, just right out of the bag. Once it is ready to wrap, we are actually going to add the seasoning back in and once it's tenderized uh, we will start to pull it and actually add more seasoning as needed a lot of you don't know this but pork is naturally very fragrant and sweet and savory at the same time you actually don't need to add too much for me less is more with pork so people always ask me what i prefer boneless or bone in and to be honest with you for me pulled pork uh, best uh, flavors actually come out from the bark so bone in or boneless doesn't matter it's just a preference for in in my opinion and it's also a ease of prepping right so today I chose to go with boneless because I don't want to have to deal with pulling out the bone later but not just that these boneless ones already have cuts in them and so when I place them in the smoker I can kind of open it up a little bit and expose more surface area which means more bark and also uh, less cooking time. There's also a fat cap. You can see every single one has a fat cap and I'm sure you're wondering, Winnie, do you, like, you mush the fat cap into the pulled pork? No. Actually, once I once they're ready and I'm starting to pull, I actually go in with by hand and I actually go in and take out the thick pieces of fat that's not edible. So I don't trim the, the fat cap because fat is flavor. But what I do is when it's all ready and done and I'm actually going in to pull the pork, any parts of the fat that's not rendered well, I actually take it out. The rest, I, I put it in. So in a way, when you're smoking you know, 100, 100, 200 pounds of pork butts, you don't have time to go trim every single piece and you know prepare every single piece. And this is just a time saver for me. It saves me time, labor, and also I can pass the savings on to my customers. So that's a little hack that I figured out through Harry. People always ask if I like to chop or pull the pork by hand or with those, you know, Wolverine claws. And amongst all those methods, I actually like to go in with my hands. I do double gloves. Sometimes I have, if I have the cotton gloves in hand, I put the cotton gloves and then the uh, vinyl gloves on and I actually pull it by hand because then you have that feeling, right? You, you feel like, okay, you're not going to over pull it. Like with the, with the Wolverine claws, sometimes you over shred chopping sometimes when you chop you actually smush the meat so I personally prefer going in by hand and actually pulling it and, and feeling it and knowing what I'm doing our smoker is almost a temp here's the thing I realized uh, don't add don't add the wood right before you load the brisket because all that smoke is gonna go in your face <laughs> these are about 10 pounds each more or less It's like tossing babies, right? Yeah, like tossing babies. Yes. So for those uh, moms and dads out there used to lugging around your baby, your kid, this is a good practice. Definitely. Okay. Over. Any particular way you like Rosario? You like to put put it horizontal this way or the other way? You like both ways? Both ways. What, this way? Mm -hmm. Both ways? Okay. Right. Here are the uh, 16 butts. Beautifully smoked to perfection. So Master Winnie is going to prep it now to distribute for charity. The Wagyu is absolutely amazing. I can have another piece, man. This is super duper $800 brisket Wagyu. I'm just prepping this because actually we don't need this until Sunday, until two days later. So it's still a little bit tough. It needs to be tenderized, but you can see it's got a nice smoke ring. 
yep, good nice color, nice, nice bark. Yep. You know, uh, the edges are shredding. So this is the fat I was talking about. Yep, this is the you belly fat. Uh, this is the uh, one we turned for competition right here. This is the one, the secret piece here for competition that is super tender. You see like your little, little spaghetti here. This is what you do for competition. Have a bite. It's the best part. <laughs> pork heaven. That's right. Pork heaven right Even now. Even without any seasoning. Yep. So uh, the pork is naturally salty. So you don't really need to put any seasoning on it. For those of you who are cooking for backyard and family, try this way. You never cook pork butt without any seasoning. Give it a shot and you'll be suitably impressed. For those of you who are running restaurants and catering, this is a quick way to kind of prep your butts with minimal labor. And, uh, you can then salt it after you cook it. So now the reason why, if this is for service um, tomorrow, I wouldn't cut them into smaller pieces. I'm cutting them down so that it cools down. I'm actually going to refrigerate them and actually finish them tomorrow because they actually don't need this until two days later. So when you're handling meat, temperature is very important. You want it to cool down as fast as possible and warm as fast as possible so that it avoids the danger zone of 141 to 140. Sorry, 41, sorry, 41 degrees to 141 is called the danger zone. Okay. And the so, way to remember is 4140. 4140. Yeah, actually, technically, you know, 41 to 130 something. But just that's 40 okay. 4140, 4140, everybody. Just pay attention, everybody. 4140. Listen to Pitmaster Winnie. So, so if you are surf safe certified, this is what you learn in a day long class to get certified as a food handler, food manager, credentials. If I didn't cut this into small pieces and I just let it cool down, uh, it would take the whole day. You know, so and in that time frame, you know, a lot of bacteria will uh, build up and it would not be safe to eat. Sixteen butts is about uh, maybe 150 pounds worth of butts. It is, yeah. It's about 10 pounds for each boneless butt, so we got 16 here, so 150 pounds each. But that'll feed a lot of people. So if you guys are interested to, you know, help out. You know, your local food bank, your local charitable uh, organizations will, will obviously never turn down beautifully smoked barbecue meats. Another thing is, uh, I didn't, I could technically um, keep it in the warmer for 24 hours, but I feel that after 12, 16 hours, the flavor actually kind of uh, disappears. You know, it's the intensity. It's not there anymore so for pork it's true right for brisket it, i find that the hold is good but for pork usually you don't want to hold too long for pork but for brisket definitely i think that you know the 12 hour hold is fine at the right temperature you want no, to hold I meant it over 24. over 24. Okay. Yeah, yeah i've never held anything over 24, 24 and i feel like it probably doesn't hold that well we should do a test Winnie. <laughs> it sounds like another episode here. It does. All right, all right, folks. You heard this. We just uh, decided to. We need another test. Another so, episode. if you guys want to leave your comments below about the kind of testing we want to do, I think that um, we want to test the rest at different times. If you're running a restaurant, obviously you have time pressures. You have to prepare for the next cook. So I reckon like a four-hour hold, right? Eight-hour, twelve-hour, and then twenty-four-hour hold would be things that you want to think about. We're also going to do a series of tests on what we call refrigerated holes. So cook, cool, refrigerate and reheat to see which type of reheating methods work best without any loss in the meat quality itself. Wow, that is so juicy. Whoa, delish. All the liquid oozing into the pan. So in food service, a lot of people don't know this, you know. We do a lot of things in steps. That's only, it's the only way you can do it to make the amount of food that you need to make at the price that your customers want to pay. So a lot of things are done assembly line style, step-by-step um, -step style, you know, and this is something that you would do in food service. So if I had to give people three tips who are considering to go into food service, I would say one, um, it's about finding efficiency. Um, it's not being lazy, it's just finding shortcuts and efficiency, um, keeping your costs down. Uh, two, keeping your food consistent. Um, you don't have to have the best steaks in the world. You know, the winner of the steak competition can, can great, make great steak, but can he make 200 great steaks in one night? So, uh, 
um, consistency is key because when your customers come today and they have your food they love it and they come to next week and they're disappointed they won't come back so that's number two and number three I would have to say you really need to love what you do because it is not easy on your body it's hard work physically um, not just that when everybody is enjoying their holidays or their weekends having mimosas you're working because that's time to make money so you are sacrificing a lot in your personal life to be in food service um, but if you love what you do and you love your customers you never work a day in your life all right spoken like a true experienced professional who has been there done that so for those so you who are contemplating getting into this business remember harry taught you three important questions number one can you make it number two will your customers buy it and number three can you make a profit a lot of people don't give the third question a lot of thought because uh, a brisket takes 14 hours to cook there's a lot of costs involved and if you don't know how to manage your costs of your materials your supplies your food and putting your labor your overhead and your additive it's going to be hard to make a profit now the jus is going in this is the best part all the, all the pork jus being poured over all the meat we're going to put a cover over it refrigerate it let it rest and then we're going to pass it all give it all away thanks for stopping by i hope you found this uh, charity episode useful I highly encourage you to reach out and cook barbecue for friends and family, members of your community, any first responders, and anyone needing a warm meal.